Hey there, everybody. It's uh, OBS session one. I'm really excited to be here with Meredith. Um, Hello. <laughs> so uh, this is our first OBS session. So we're going to have a few of these um, going on, but we really have to kind of right away dig into what this tool is, why we're talking about it. Um, uh, Meredith, um, do you uh, want to maybe kind of talk a little bit about what the tool is in general, and then I can kind of go into some like um, specific examples of how, seeing it used? Just to yeah, start absolutely. Yeah. Um, I will preface, I am a complete newbie with OBS, so I'm excited to be in the first session. Um, and OBS is a open source recording and streaming software that lets you um, configure your screen to show yourself, um, your your screen input, another camera, anything like that. And it's more of like a behind the scenes producing application. Um, and it's really cool to see. So I'm excited to, I've seen it in like the examples kind of we're going to talk about. Um, and that's more kind of like my experience with seeing it. So kind of getting in the behind the scenes is going to be really cool uh, to see like how it all actually works. Yeah, um, I, I, I've been... Um... I've been kind of fascinated with OBS for a little while because uh, I've been aware of it for a long time, using it for like maybe four or five years for mostly hobbyist things. And then I would say in the last year or two, um, so, some stuff in my last job and, and a lot of stuff at Reclaim using it a lot and getting more comfortable. I'm not, I'm not like a super advanced user of OBS, but I am pretty comfortable with a lot of the basic things that we're going to do in this course in terms of like... Mm -hmm. Uh, showing folks how they can make a recording where they share their screen and maybe their webcam in the corner, customizing how that looks, um, setting it up to stream to different places, things like that. It's also just really interesting to see how like, um, so like a big a big hobby of mine is also like video games and gaming. And it's really interesting to see how like this tool kind of was born out of that, basically. Like there mm -hmm. were... There were, um, you can track the rise of OBS with the rise of like Twitch streaming pretty, um, pretty close together. Basically, when these services mm -hmm. came online and, and then like later YouTube added live streaming, you know, where folks can do this on the service end for free, there was a need for tools to do this on your computer. And um, most of the tools at the time were expensive um, and really complicated in many cases too. Um, and so OBS was kind of an answer to that. Um, and it has grown from the, the free option, the open source option to kind of the main player in the space. There are definitely other tools that exist that do things like this. There are, um, paid options There are, and, and I don't pretend to know anything about like broadcast television. Like I'm sure they're using mm -hmm. way different stuff, but, um, Absolutely. but it is crazy to see, like, if you're watching a, like a YouTube or Twitch live stream or you're watching a recording, it was odds are good that they're using OBS to capture or record it in some way. Um, and it's really kind of cool. Um, so uh, looking at the, the OBS website here um, there, I, I don't love this screenshot to be honest with you, because I once the, the screenshot they have it once it does show the application, but it also is a little bit, maybe not, real easy to wrap your mind around but this is kind of an example of the types of things you can do with obs you can have a, a scene and the scene is just what the viewer is seeing on screen basically um and you can combine multiple elements into it just like you were saying meredith you can have mm -hmm. you know your your screen you could have other things captured and and you can also do audio stuff in obs as well um the uh some examples, um, it, it, just going to like my peer tube, the, the streams I do for Reclaim where it's just me, usually I'm doing an OBS. Um, and so this is just a real simple, you know, example of like, hey, it's capturing my screen. I'm in the corner. Um, it may be a little hard to pick up on this video just because it's going to be a little small, but I like to do dumb things like round the corners on my um my screen capture and add a little drop shadow just to make it look kind of nice and professional. Um, no, I can, you can definitely see the rounded corners within the video. Like, it's, like now on the white screen, that's really cool. Yeah. And it's, it's a small thing, but like, I, I think it adds a lot of professionality. 
Um, and so mm -hmm. we're, we're not going to get into all of that of this flex course, although I can um, direct folks to the video I looked at on how to make like drop shadows and stuff like that kind of fancier things. Um, but, uh, but you will have the, the skill set to do all that stuff basically um, throughout the course. Um, the other thing with OBS is you can have multiple scenes. So you can switch, you can set these things up ahead of time to look however you want and switch between them on the fly while you're recording or streaming. So like here, I've got a GIF from Jurassic Park and some text and uh, that's what's showing. And then when I was ready to, you know, start the stream proper, I switched to my like my what I call my display scene, which is showing my my display, right? Display capture. Mm -hmm. um, you can also have scenes that show just your webcam, right? So that's that's that here and being able to flip between them on the fly. That's what OBS is kind of about. Um, so we're going to be able to do all of that by the end of this course. Um, an example of where you can go, um, one, one thing I really love is there's this um, charity speed running, game, video game speed running thing that goes a week long in January and in um, the summer. They do it twice a year and they, it's a charity. They raise money for either the Prevent Cancer Foundation or um, Doctors Without Borders in the summer. And they do literally a full five day marathon and they bring people in. Uh, virtually and physically, they're playing games on stream, they're showing donations and things on stream, and they produce all of that just with OBS. Um, so, I mean, I'm That's sure there's so other cool. back-end tools, but the video is produced with, with OBS. Um, so wow. this is possible in the tool. I, I do not know how to do this, to be clear. <laughs> but I love that this is possible inside of this OBS tool. That is amazing to me. In fact, if anyone's interested, they actually have a like their because it's all volunteer based. They actually have their like training video on how to run their setup on their YouTube. So you can just watch it if you're interested. I find that fascinating. I think most people maybe won't, um, but whatever. I, I think it's cool that it's possible. Um, yeah, so, absolutely. Um, so that, that's just some examples uh, where we're going to get where you could go if you <laughs> really wanted to um, and and what you can do with it. Um, so to kind of kick things off here, um, the first thing we're going to need to do is set up OBS itself. Um, so uh, I'm going to kind of uh, we're going to kind of flip back and forth here. Meredith has some slides. I'm going to do some demoing. And uh, yeah, if you're watching, feel free to, um, you know, if you're watching live and taking notes, that's cool. If you want to pause the video while you're installing things, I would definitely encourage that. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to start out with um, a downloaded copy of OBS and um, with all of the um, system preferences to give the correct permissions like screen recording, your video camera um, or any um, camera inputs and um, microphone permissions to make sure that um, the computer will be able to recognize all of that good stuff. And um, today we'll be going through getting started and setting up um, in particular um, the uh, auto configuration wizard and then additional inputs as well. So um, what we're picking up the um, setup from this auto configuration wizard page um, and then we can um, start adding our own inputs and all that good stuff. Yeah, and so mm -hmm. basically you're just gonna go to the website listed here, obsproject.com uh, slash download. You'll download it, you'll install it. It's, it's pretty easy to install. The first time you launch, like Meredith said, it's going to prompt you on, I think on Mac OS only, to grant permissions to do screen recording, microphone, stuff like that. But it does a pretty good job of walking you through and saying, you've done this, you've done this, you've done this. Um, then on the first launch, it's going to pop up this auto configuration wizard. This thing is a little annoying to me because it, it, it presents itself as important and it it kind of isn't actually like it doesn't do as much as you might think. <laughs> um, it <laughs> says it'll do things like optimize for your internet connection, but we're actually not really going to worry too much about that. The default settings built into OBS are pretty good for most use cases. So what I would recommend here is to just click optimize just for recording. I will not be streaming, even though we will be streaming. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, and you can just hit next and accept the defaults. It's going to default to doing a 1080p video which is going to be 
pretty good like quality wise for most folks um uh, sometimes I do higher resolution stuff because I have a larger monitor and higher resolution monitor. Um, but usually 1080p is going to be what you're going to want to be recording. And most computers are not going to have too hard a time doing that. And most internet connections, as long as you have like faster than, than uh, if, as long as you have a decent internet connection to be okay for streaming, just to be clear, um, this you know this tool i guess i mean I, we've talked about it but maybe uh maybe to be clear this is a tool that runs cult fully on your computer right so if you do have a very old computer um you may have trouble with some of this um but i will say i i've used um obs on six year old machines for basic stuff and not had too much trouble um but um if you do have trouble in the discord um, post screenshots, um, ask questions. I'm pretty comfortable helping folks troubleshoot that stuff. Um, and there are actually tools built into OBS that can tell you like what your computer is having trouble with if, uh, or if, if your mm -hmm. computer is having trouble like CPU wise or network wise, it actually lets you, it'll actually tell you what, what is the problem, which is nice. Um, and then finally, if you are in a spot where your internet connection is not very good, you don't have to stream to use OBS. Like recording is uh, just as valid a use case, if not more so, in a lot for a lot of folks. So um, everything we're going to be doing, we're going to do um, streams and recording just to demo what that looks like. But if you don't want to do streaming with it, you do not have to. You can just record locally to your computer. So um, switching over to um, the the next slide here, um, the first thing we're going to do is compositing is is kind of what the term is for it um and so that's really going to be just setting up multiple things on screen for our video so um we're going to set up a single scene for right now where we add our microphone and our video uh just for right now just our camera um and uh and then we will uh do more with it from there basically so uh, I'm going to switch over to, to my my screen here, um, and um, I'm actually going to make. Oops, I had OBS. never heard of the word compositing until we started preparing for this session. So this is like it's like a new new world for me to see like how that that term comes to life with the um, with the inputs and setting up your scene on that side. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, um, you know what I'm going to need to do here, and I may have to stop my screen, but um, I'm actually going to change the resolution of my monitor so that you all can see this a little bit larger. It's, it's going to be a little small unless I do this. So um, we may have to, I may have to reshare my screen here, but we'll see. Maybe not. Um, there we yeah, go. Looks like that just works. That okay, clean. cool. Um, sweet. Yeah, so I just blew up everything looks huge on my screen but that's <laughs> it's gonna make for a better video um so yeah so i've got obs open i've already of course installed it i've got the permissions granted and it, it will like i said it'll walk you through that um and i've already gone through that auto config wizard thing that i uh just mentioned in the previous slide um this is the main interface so there's a bunch of things going on here um this black square up on top is a preview of what our video is going to look like. Um, we've got scenes, which again, a scene is the, a visual layout that we've made for our video and we can have multiple scenes. This lets us choose between those uh, sources. This is the stuff that goes into a scene. We're going to deal with that in a second. Audio mixer lets us see our audio setup. You can see I already have um, my microphone is already being picked up, but I'll show you how to set that up in a second. Um, and scene transitions lets you pick how, when you move between scenes, how it's going to, is it going to fade between them nicely? Is it going to be hard cut? Um, there are also other types of transitions you can do, I believe. Um, I've never done anything but fade and cut personally. But uh, every, anything other than that is a little bit cheesy a lot of the time. So I haven't messed with it too much. But yeah, you could add in like the cool like um, PowerPoint transitions where it like bounces the, the image throughout the screen. Yeah. And that sort of stuff. And and you can do like wipe, 
like left to right or right to left wipes and stuff if you want you know like like original trilogy star wars you know <laughs> um or yeah. um and you can um there there are also really advanced transitions you can do that personally i haven't dealt w messed with but i know are possible so you can do things like tell obs to display an image or animation over the top of your two scenes while you're transitioning that's how you see a lot of these really advanced transitions work is they will make us like a one second video that basically plays. That is also possible um, in OBS. I have never done with that. That's a little bit more than I'm willing to deal with, mm -hmm. but it's possible. Um, and I like, I like pointing out that these things are possible because I don't know. I just, I find it fascinating that OBS is not a super simple tool, right? That's why we're doing a course mm -hmm. on it, but it is relatively simple. Like you can wrap your head around it, but I love when a tool like this can go from almost anyone can pretty much anyone can learn this to professionals could use this. That's awesome. Like, yeah, uh, in my absolutely. opinion. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our audio. So we're going to have to go right to settings um, and then audio on the left side here. And um, there's a, there's like sample rate and we're not really worried about that. Um, what we do want is in global audio devices, your mic or auxiliary audio is going to be set to probably default. You can uh, leave it on default. That's going to use your system default microphone. And that's okay. But if you've ever had trouble with video calls and like audio devices, you know that sometimes things can change those for you. So I personally like to manually set it to something. Um, so if you're you can set it manually to like your laptop's microphone, or if you've got like a headset, you could select that. Um, I personally don't really recommend um, Bluetooth for doing recording or streaming because you'll have like occasional connection issues and things can get like garbled and, and bad sounding. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, um, voice calling tools like Zoom and Jitsi and Google Meet, those do a little better job at dealing with Bluetooth because they know people are going to use them. Things like OBS are kind of not designed with that in mind. They're thinking you've got a, a wired or built-in mic. So if you have no other mic, use the one built in your laptop. That'll be totally fine for this. I have a, a whole audio, like I have a microphone and a whole audio setup. You don't need that to do this. Um, I'm going to use it because it's what I have, but um, but you don't need a, a super fancy setup to, to do it. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, select my microphone. I've got, as you can see, like a s just stupid amount of microphones. My my main <laughs> one, though, is called Mix B, uh, <laughs> which is <laughs> weird. But but you you also could select, your, like in my case, I'm on a Mac, your MacBook Pro microphone. That would be what I would su suggest people pick if they don't have anything else. So pick that. We're not going to do anything else, but just to note here, you can have multiple audio devices, uh, multiple USB microphones, all that kind of stuff. You can set up in OBS. Um, we're not really going to do that in this tutorial, but uh, or in this course, I should say, but um, but it is possible. So, what scenarios would you use for multiple microphones? Like if you were doing like a podcast setup or something like that? It's a little tricky. So, yes. Yeah, the answer is yes, but there's also some less than ideal things about that because typically with a podcast, podcasts are not always, but often edited, right? Mm -hmm. Or you at least want the ability to edit it. And in those cases, you normally want to be recording somewhere where all the files can be split by person. So you can have a file that says Taylor and a file that says Meredith, and then I can go in and ed like throw them into... Uh, Logic, which is like an audio editing application, or uh, GarageBand or Audacity. Mm -hmm. um, however, if you're going to do like a live video podcast and you're, you're like, well, nope, we're not going to get the chance to edit it, then yeah, you could totally do something like this. The, the world of audio is complicated, though, and so there are also a lot of tools that will let you like combine audio sources and feed them multiple places. Um, we have an advanced uh, uh uh, session in this course where we're going to kind of chat about like tools that are related to OBS but aren't that we like to use um, um, mm -hmm. or that I like to use. I, I'm, I can't remember if that one is. But yeah, that's Jim and I. So um, Jim does some of this stuff too. Um, so personally, I never run more than audio, one audio device into OBS, but there are reasons to. 
Um, the mm -hmm. other major reason to might be like if you were doing something like capturing video from like you were doing game streaming. We're not going to really cover game streaming in this course, but uh, those folks use capture cards and you would want your game sound in the recording, too. Um, mm -hmm. So that would be another reason you do this. Um, gotcha. So, yeah. Um, and, and in my case, like I use a, a like a, a camera, like not a webcam. I use like a real camera from as my webcam and in my case sorry i am having issues with my mouse because of my resolution here um in my case i could use my camera audio as well so that's listed here as shadowcast um which oh, is the okay. name of my capture device but so there are reasons and you could have like backup audio um mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of crazy advanced things but most of the time if it's just you on the recording you really only need the one device Mm -hmm. So um, so I'm going to hit OK here. These global audio devices are what they say in that they apply to every scene. So um, there are concepts of audio devices that only apply to one scene. Uh, usually you're not, they're less common, but I just want to point this out. The reason we're setting this up in settings is this will apply to every scene. We don't have to manually do this when we make more mm -hmm. scenes later. Um, the things that wouldn't be are like you can have a video play and it could have sound that would only apply to the scene that that video is on. So, um, but now you can see in our audio mixer that this shows up right here. It says Mike Ox. Um, you can actually rename. You can right click on it and rename it. So I could, I could put like my microphone, or if you were doing multiple people like you just mentioned, you could say Hey, this is Taylor, um, and label them like that. There are also um, all kinds of effects and things we can do with audio. We're not going to do that today, but um, there are it, there's a lot of capability here in audio. Um, okay, so the, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to add our camera to a scene. Um, so uh, in the sources panel, uh, we have this just one scene right now. It's called scene. Um, I'm actually going to rename this right off the bat. Um, so again, I'll, I can just right click on it, go to rename, and let's just call this camera. Um, and then in our sources, we there's a bunch of different things we can add to scenes. Um, like I already mentioned, you can have individual audio things. Um, you can just put a color <laughs> on the screen. You can put images. You can do slideshow built in that will like flip between images. You can play video. You can um, you can actually embed scenes into other scenes. That is a super advanced thing. Um, I don't know what siphon is. I don't know. Do you even get the siphon client as an option? Is that, is that on yours? Um, it does show up on mine, yeah. Okay. I'm not really sure what that is. Um, I'll have to look that up. You can put text on screen. Uh, VLC video sources, uh, just a different way to play video, basically. Um, uh, and then video capture device is what we're going to use. That's for cameras and stuff. So um, if I hit video capture device... Um, and it's going to say, hey, you want to create a new one? We can give it a name. I'm going to call this, um, I'm going to give this a name other than video capture device. One thing that's a little annoying about OBS is every single element of every single source and scene have to have a unique name. So I can't just call this camera because I have a scene called camera. Um, so I'm going to call it, um, you know, webcam, I guess. Um, and then we want to make source visible will be checked. We, we will want that. Um, so you can hit OK. Um, and from here, we can select what the device is. So again, you should get a list if you click on device of all of the cameras available to you. Um, and um, I have a few, um, but uh, FaceTime HD camera, if I do that, that's going to be my laptop's webcam. Um, so my laptop's over there, <laughs> as you can <laughs> see. Um, Shadowcast is my main camera. So I'm going to select that. Um, and then uh, normally I don't really have to mess with the presets, but there um, you can. There are some cameras that will require you to do that, um, but usually you can just leave it alone. Um, but if you do have a camera that looks like squished or weird, you can try some of these other resolutions and see if that fixes it for you. Um, and then we can just hit OK. So it's now on our scene. Um, and if I uh, if I just um, pull this. Uh, down a little bit, or I should say, if I click on this, you can see that this is my camera. I can actually click on it and move it around. It has nice little guides, like if you've used Photoshop or a tool like Photoshop, 
kind of like that where you can see how it's positioned on screen. We can resize it by um, dra dragging the corner of it. <clears throat> I wouldn't. Um, one of the things I like about OBS is that it doesn't let you incorrectly resize things by like dragging it too wide. I, I just like that because like who wants that? Um, <laughs> um, and then you can also do things like this. So you can also right click on a, um, a source and go to transform. And I use this all the time. There's a bunch of things to like rotate it and stuff. Honestly, I'm never really using that. But you can do right click transform fit to screen. I use that all the time if I'm resizing things um, or, or do things like, hey, center it, stuff like that. Um, I just like to point out that that transform menu when you right click on a source is super handy. Yeah. Okay, so so I do have a question before we move on to other stuff. The, the top portion here where we just put our camera in, is that what you're recording? That's the view your, your um, final recording will look like. Is that, is that right? Yes, yes. Yeah. This is what the audience will see. Um, there is um, occasions where that's not 100% true. <laughs> um, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to just mention it right off the bat. There is a thing called studio mode that if you clicked on that over here, then that you have the ability to the right side or, uh, <laughs> the one that says program camera, that is what the audience sees and preview is where you can make changes and then you can push them to live. So gotcha. this is more of an advanced thing. I don't, I don't really personally use this, but what this lets you do, uh, this studio mode, and it is good to know about, is you can make changes. So, so like, imagine if I was recording this and I noticed that I had, let's say there were two cameras and I wanted to change the alignment, like I had something a little bit misaligned and it looks strange. If I'm recording actively, like people are watching it and I'm moving this, people are going to see it moving, right? Mm -hmm. Like, And that's a little bit distracting. Um, so studio mode lets you make changes and then hit this transition button and push them to, to the live view. Gotcha. Um, okay. So it's good to know about. We're not really going to use it a lot in this course because I actually think studio mode kind of complicates things. I think that's mm -hmm. something that's better for someone who's super comfy with, um, with OBS. But it's good to know about. But yeah, um, this is a preview of what your recording will be. Now, we're not recording yet, so, you know, um, there's nothing happening. But... If I was recording, this is what it would look like. And this audio down here is what people would be hearing, be putting into the, the video. Mm -hmm. um, so um, let's kind of go back to our slides for a second. So we've already done uh, our microphone, done our video, we've set up our scene. Um, the next step is recording. Um, so there's um, there, there are some settings that we can mess with. I'm going to show them. Um, but uh, mostly we're going to just be hitting the start recording button. So I'm actually mm -hmm. going to, we're going to start right with that. So this is our scene. If I hit start recording, uh, you'll be recording. <laughs> That's kind of <laughs> it. There's sort of no fuss. You'll notice at the bottom right that there's a little list of, uh, hey, are you live? That's for streaming. And then recording is for recording. So we've mm -hmm. been recording for 15 seconds now. Um, you'll notice a CPU counter over here and 60 FPS. So this just is saying, hey, your CPU is only at 5%. So, you know, not being used too much. Um, and 60 FPS is the frames per second of the recording. If you're struggling, if your computer was struggling to keep up with whatever you're doing, you may see that dip below 60 FPS. Um, the, there's two sort of formats. Formats isn't really the right word, but... Typically for video stuff, we're doing 30 or 60 FPS. Those are the two most common things to be recording at. Absolutely. Um, I'm using 30 FPS right now, um, and my CPU is fine, but um, I believe that that, could, that can be changed um, before you start recording if you want to, if you want to have a higher frame rate than, than just the 30 at default. Yeah, um, and, and we're going to get right into that right now. So uh, okay, let's awesome. hit stop recording actually now that we've we've done that. And so now we're going to dig into where these settings actually are if you do want to make changes to them. So if I go to settings um, and then uh, out to uh, output, um, our output mode is simple. I would recommend keeping it there. Um, 
there's advanced mode that lets you tweak like all kinds of real in-depth video stuff that I personally don't really know much about. So I'm not going to make recommendations on. And in my experience, um, these settings change frequently. So there are all kinds of new things coming, being built into OBS all the time that allow things to work more efficiently, be easier for your computer to use. And keeping that on simple will kind of keep you on the recommended things from the developer, which I think is going to be a smart move for most people. Mm -hmm. So bitrate, this is automatically set to 2500 kilobits per second. We're just going to leave that there. That's fine. Audio bitrate, we're going to leave that there too. Encoder, all of that stuff we're going to leave uh, as normal. Um, one thing I wanted to mention here, though, is this is the path where recordings are going to go to. So we made a recording, but you might be wondering, where did, where did it go? Um, and it's going to go to users, Taylor, movies in my case. But you can change this. Um, I, I usually just leave it there, but uh, it's good to know that if you forget, you can come back here and find where those recordings are. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can also change what the um, what the formats for everything uh, get saved out as. Um, so MKV is the default, and it's a little bit, you may not have heard of that, but it is a relatively popular format. Um, MP4 is probably one that most people have heard of. The, the disadvantage with this, with MP4, is if for some reason you're recording and your computer crashes, your recording's no good. Like, it's all lost. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't actually recommend recording in that. The default is MKV. That's where we're going to leave it. And the cool mm -hmm. thing about OBS is it does warn you of this. Um, there, MKV is still accepted by most things. And OBS actually has a built-in tool to uh, convert from MKV to, uh, to MP4. So we'll show that in a second. Um, so if that's a problem like your video editing tool or something doesn't support MKV, real easy fix. Yeah, um, you can use another tool like Handbrake or something like that to convert if needed. Yeah, you can use Handbrake. Um, and the, the advantage of what I'm going to show in a little bit is it's it's a, it's a really weird and esoteric kind of video thing. But MKV is sort of a container for, for all types of video. And MP4 is a container that only supports one type of video. Basically, M uh, OBS has a way to convert really quickly between the two. So you, if you've ever converted something in Handbrake, it takes like, you know, say you have an hour long video, it may take 20 minutes to convert it or 30 minutes. This mm -hmm. will take like seconds for an hour long video. Because oh, it's doing, gotcha. It's doing less work, basically. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we'll show that in a second. But certainly you can use other tools if there's other specific needs you have. Um, all right, we've already been in audio. Uh, video. So this is where we can go and mess with the frame rate and resolution. So um, the this these are important. So there's a base canvas resolution and an output resolution. Um, basically, uh, there are what I what I typically recommend to folks is to keep these either the same <laughs> um, and keep them at 1080p. Um, or if there are advanced things that you're trying to do, you could set the base resolution to whatever your monitor uh, resolution is. This is what I tend to do. Um, and basically what this lets me do is it can get, it can let my canvas, and this preview over here is the canvas, um, match my monitor. And then it lets me change via this output the quality or resolution I'm going to go to. This is more of an advanced thing. I think for almost anybody getting started, just set these both to 1080p and, and don't think about it again. <laughs> um, if you are doing something like streaming to Twitch, and Twitch only supports, I think, 720p for certain accounts, um, then you could set both of these to 720p. Um, the reason why you would ever really want to mess with that advanced thing I was talking about is when you change this resolution, it's going to resize that preview, and you will have to rearrange your your sources. So if I do this just as a demo, um, don't actually do this uh, right now, but I'm going to change both these to 720p. And um, you'll notice that my camera is all misaligned and I have to resize it. Right. Um, oh, yeah. So that's the whole reason why there's a canvas resolution. Um, 
So basically, uh, most of the time, set these the same. Set them both to 10 EP, and that's that's going to be what most people are going to want and or need. Um, all right, so I'm going to go back in there and video. The other one is uh, frame rate. So mine is set to 60. Um, 30 is probably um, often what you want. Um, frankly, that most of the stuff I make for like Reclaim, where I'm making screen captures, 30 is what I use. Um, it, it's just 30 is like more close to what you see on television most of the time with the exception of sports. Sports are normally broadcast at 60 FPS and, uh, in the OBS world game streaming, usually you do at 60 FPS. It basically just makes things look more, if you don't know what frame rate is, just set it to 30 and be done. Um, but if you're curious, um, FPS higher the number, the sort of smoother it looks to the to the human eye basically um and it will be more taxing on your computer to do a higher number because it has to it's literally frames per second right so it has to make an image 60 times a second that's twice as hard as making an image 30 times per second so my recommendation here uh would actually be to change this one unless you're doing something specific where you know you need it set these to 1080p set this to 30 for most folks. Um, and we'll have a lot of these recommendations put in the blog post as well, just if you're if you're following along that way too. Um, so for now, we're, we're done in here. We, that's really most of the, the things we have to worry about. We'll come back there later for streaming. But um, yeah, so now that we know where our recordings go, <laughs> um, I'm actually going to look at that. Um, I'm going to open up my uh, file browser. It was Users Taylor Movies on mac os that should be what it is it'll be your user use users your username movies so basically your home folder in the movies folder i have a bunch of stuff in here um but if i sort by modified i should have my most recent recording in here and i can open it up so there there it is um i mentioned before that it makes an mkv video if you want to turn that into mp mp4 we just go to file then Remux Recordings. Um, and then we just have to click on this little dot here to open up our file browser. You select your video. So in this case, it's the one that I had right there. And um, it went away. Oh, um, OK, that was weird. Um, so <laughs> then here, I can just hit Remux. And that's it. It's done. It's converted to MP4. So if I go into um my finder again and go back to movies there's a mp4 version of my oh, video oh that's cool so it's really fast right mm -hmm. like obviously this is a small video but it's um extremely fast that way um i've never oh that's kind of cool too i didn't even notice that there's also a shortcut you can just go file show recordings and that'll just pop up the recordings folder for obs that's actually super handy i didn't i didn't know about that one um so that's a recording we made a recording <laughs> um, and uh, going back to our, our slides here, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do streaming. So again, this is, if you're following along with this, this is sort of optional. I want to show how this is done, um, but if you don't have a place to stream to or don't want to set up um, a place to stream to, you don't really have to, um, but I do think it's good to know how it works. We are going to use owncast for streaming and we're going to deploy it on reclaim cloud and that's mainly because owncast is super fast to get set up with um the there are other services that are supported in uh obs in fact pretty much if something can't if obs can't stream to it as far as i'm concerned it's not really a streaming platform like pretty much everything supports obs the major streaming uh platforms do um so Let's um, switch back to my screen here. Um, and so I'm going to actually go over to my Reclaim Cloud. Um, oh, I must have closed that window. Whoops. Let me pull it back up. So I had just deployed an owncast install. And um, it's very, very simple to do. If you haven't done this before, you can just go to Marketplace, search for Owncast, hit Install, give it an environment name, 
and hit install and that's it. And then it will have some instructions for you afterwards about how to map a custom domain if you'd like to do that and what your default password is. Um, I'm gonna just check, I'm not gonna even map a custom domain today. Um, I'm also just going to log in with the default password for now. Um, so the username will be admin by default and the default password for all owncast installs is abc123. I'm gonna go in and change that right away because. We don't want to keep it there. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> I, will, I will say too, I'll plug the last, um, the, I forget, totally trying to find, um, the last course we ran um, did go over setting up Owncast too. So if you want to learn more detail about that, definitely go check that one out. Yeah, for sure. Um, the Open Media Ecosystems course covers um, PeerTube as well, which you could also stream to. Um, we did cover the use of owncast although i will say the setting up is very different because since we made that session i made this installer for owncast so you don't have to go through everything that we we, we talk more about owncast in that session and then we have a link to jim's blog post on setting it up but this is now what i would recommend is just go to the marketplace and hit that owncast button Sweet. um yeah um and i think we'll have a doc on it pretty soon too so all right so i went to I logged in. I went to configuration server setup. I'm going to set a new stream key. I'm actually just going to use um, one password to generate uh, a, a long uh, thing. Um, so if I just go here, password generator. You could put this as whatever you want, by the way. I just want to make something random. Um, and um, so I've set a stream key. Uh, when I hit save, or when I sorry, when I hit update, this will become my. Oh, I didn't even notice. You can just generate it from here. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, yeah, use this generate button. <laughs> um, so then copy it, copy it, because uh, it also becomes your own cast um, login or your own cast password, um, and then update it. So I do have that uh, copied. Um, so let me log back in just to. Okay, cool, that's working. Um, and then we need to set it up in uh, OBS. So if I go back. Um, in sorry, if I go back into admin, um, on the home tab, it actually has, um, hey, use your broadcasting software. Here's the URL and here's the stream key. So if I go over to OBS again, and um, I don't have a lot of room to maneuver Windows at the moment, um, but that's okay. Um, if I go into OBS again, I can go to settings and then stream. And you'll notice there's a bunch of services listed in here. So it has sort of built-in support for Twitch where you can just hit connect account and it will like have you log in and, and do that kind of thing. Um, it does something similar for YouTube, which is super cool. Um, I've never used Facebook Live, so it looks like it doesn't do that with Facebook Live. You need a stream key. I've never used Restream.io, but it does have a, uh, a, a login and then I forget Twitter does live streaming, um, but okay. Um, but what we're going to do is custom. And this allows us to manually specify a server and a stream key, which is what we need for our own cast. So I'm going to go to custom and uh, hit copy. And um, by the way, I mean, I'm going to put, I guess, you know what? We're going to publish this stream key. And if anyone wants to use this during the course of this, feel free to stream to it. Uh, if two people are doing this at the same time, it's going to give one of you an error, though. Just just note that. But <laughs> um, but that is totally fine. But I will say, if you want to mess around with it, you can make a trial account in Reclaim Cloud and use it for two weeks and pay literally nothing. Or if you already have a Reclaim Cloud account, Owncast is very inexpensive to run. So you can just turn it off when you're not using it, and it will cost you basically nothing. So... Um, yeah, so I'm going to paste in my server and stream key, hit OK, and I'm going to hit Start Streaming. <laughs> um, it's important to note that we can stream and record at the same time. So I would recommend doing that. So um, Owncast in particular does not have any ability to save your uh, streams after they're done. So that they're just gone afterwards. So you will probably want to do that. But even if you're using a tool that does, Having a recording that you're making locally is a good way to have a backup in case you have some kind of internet issue. So uh, usually I like to do these things at the same time. 
Um, so Does now it that I've, tax resources on your computer versus the other, like if that's a concern? That's a perfect, that's a really good question. So um, it won't if we have things set up the way we do here. So basically in the simple view, um, you're going to be recording with the same um, quality as your stream. And so your computer does not have to do twice the work, if that makes sense. It's using... It's making essentially one video, but putting it two places. It's probably oversimplifying it, but that's basically what it's doing. Mm -hmm. um, in the advanced mode, you can have it record at a high quality and stream at a different quality if you want to. That mm -hmm. would be more taxing. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. But if we're on output mode simple, um, it, it really won't be a significant impact. It will be a slight one, but it won't be a significant impact. As you can see here, I've got my CPU is only at 11%. Um, so that's not too bad. Um, you also notice here that there is uh, kilobits per second over in the corner. That's the stream. Mm -hmm. That's my network bandwidth going out. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a timer here for how long I've been live and how long I've been recording. Um, and then this little green uh, square will show us um, the health of the stream, basically. And that's a combination of like, hey, is your CPU or your network not doing so well? then you'll turn see that turn from green to yellow to orange to red as the video is getting choppy and bad. Moving back over to Owncast here for a moment. I kind of love this about Owncast. It gives you this nice little view here. So you can see the stream started at 10.02. It's been going for two minutes. Nobody's watching, which makes sense. I'm not even watching it yet. Um, you can see that uh, this is the quality it's at. So um, we're not really going to go into Owncast settings in this thing, but... Owncast by default has a relatively low quality stream it sets out. Um, you might remember that we have ours set to 2,500 kilobits per second and 24 uh, and 30 FPS. Um, for the best quality, you may want to actually match these up in the Owncast settings to what we have in OBS. You can go to configuration and then I believe video and change it there. Of course, not during a stream. Um, but I'm not really going to mess with that um, for, for this. Um, you also can see here, it's kind of cool. It'll actually show you what it's receiving. So you can see that, hey, OBS output module, that's OBS. It's getting 2,500 kilobits per second, 30 FPS at 1080p. Um, so if I go over to my main owncast page and mute this, because otherwise I'll hear myself. <laughs> um, but... Uh, I can hit play on this, and there's my stream. It's going to be a little bit behind. Um, anytime you're streaming, there's usually a lag between like 10 and 30, sometimes more, 10 and 30 seconds or more. Um, that's just the time that the server needs to buffer the video to be able to properly send it out to everybody. So that that's always going to be sort of part of it. It's not going to be live like a Zoom or Google Meet thing. Um, and that's because these types of tools prioritize quality and smoothness over, you know, fast uh, video, if that makes sense. But here we go. We're streaming. Um, I really love how kind of simple uh, OBS makes, or sorry, Owncast makes this. Is just, you know, we spun this up in a second. There's a little chat here. Yeah, you're 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 going. It's it's that that's that's kind of all there is to a basic stream. Um, I'm gonna hit stop on these right now. Um, uh, Meredith, I don't know how much. Uh, I know you've been following along, but I don't know where you're at. Would do you want to try yeah. if I send you the stream key? Yeah, totally. I'd be I'd be down to give that a try. Okay. Um, I've got myself set up in the source and audio mixer as well. Um, and then I can get the stream set up um, on that cool. side. Cool. Yeah, I will. I, I know I, I kind of put you on the spot there, but uh, no, we that's didn't okay. talk about this. But I think it'd be kind of a neat demo. So I'm putting in our private chat here in Streamyard. The first thing is the server, and the second thing is the stream key. This okay, awesome. And um, just as a refresher, you'll go to settings, stream, and service will be custom. And then the server will go in there, and the stream key goes in there. Perfect. All right. 
that should be good to go. So I'll start streaming and then start recording as well. Um, got an error really quick um, for. Okay. Oh, I um, adjusted my recording path. So let me change that super fast. Okay. It does look like the stream's already going out though. So that's cool. Nice. Okay, cool. Um, um, I usually, I set it, I can just change it in settings. I, I, more of my organizational side of things, I made an extra folder for any recordings. Oh, um, sure. So I didn't make the folder in the, um, in my computer really. Oh, it didn't exist did it. yet, basically. Yeah. I get you. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, um, we 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 have we have liftoff with OBS. This is, <laughs> That's awesome. This is, we are now streaming. So, um, yeah, I I guess I hadn't really thought of this before playing the course, but <laughs> definitely if anyone is watching this during the you know our planned session time here, basically the month of January, a little bit in February, I will have this own cast up. So feel free to stream to it. I'll put the stream key publicly <laughs> in, on a blog post, which is maybe not an amazing idea, but that's okay. <laughs> Um, and uh, feel free to stream to it and, and check out if it's working for you. You can throw it in Discord. Or like I said, if you want to spin up your own own cast, it's very simple to do as, as you just saw me do. Um, so you can also do that. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Um, this is, uh, this is a, a cool first session, and we're going to go Absolutely. into more stuff next week. Uh, next, next, uh, next week, we'll, I'll be with Pilot. And uh, um, we'll be going through um, setting up desktop capture. So you're showing your display, um, setting up desktop audio, which is a little bit different between Mac OS and Windows. So we'll talk about that. Um, and uh, doing a picture-in-picture -picture camera like we had shown before and making a starting soon um, page, basically. So we're going to be setting up more scenes next week. Um, and then just uh, we've mentioned this a little bit, but in week three, we're going to talk about advanced stuff. So like mm -hmm. audio and lighting and um, green screening and, and all the possibilities. We're going we're gonna to get into some more advanced stuff. But um, thanks so much, uh, Meredith, um, yeah. for joining me on this one. Um, uh, one. One other thing that I totally forgot we got to mention is everything we've done, <laughs> just peeling back the curtains. I just made a mistake and forgot we were going to talk about this. Everything we've done as far as recording and streaming can also be sent to um, other applications as a virtual camera. Mm -hmm. This isn't going to make a lot of sense for what we just did because what we've set up so far is just our camera. <laughs> um, but as you do more advanced things like have your desktop shown in picture in picture and different scenes, next week um, we'll also show this. You can do things like output your OBS to another application. So as an example of what that looks like, I'm going to do a little preview for what we're going to do next week. So let me put my screen back on. Uh, this won't take very long, but if I go to our Jitsi install, and I'm just going to go into this little test room I already have. Oop, my browser crashed. That's awesome. <laughs> I uh, specifically intentionally use a different browser for StreamYard, the tool we're in, so that this never happens. Um, but I wonder if there's an issue, if I've got um, some kind of issue, but. OK, that's, that's good. I don't know why that happened before. but. Um, so uh, basically, I'm not even going to really go in the call because you'll see from here, but this is a preview of my camera. And, um, and, and Jitsi is a video calling tool, kind of like Zoom or Google Meet. Um, and if I click on this little preview here, you can see all of my cameras that are available. This is my laptop camera. This is my main camera. And that's fine. But now that we have OBS installed, there's also an OBS virtual camera, which is what we're seeing here. Um, and if I cancel out of this and go back to OBS, the third button down is start virtual camera. If I click on that, um, it will start up over here. So we can see what my OBS output is in Jitsi, and that will be my camera. Now you might say, why would you do that? It's literally just your camera right now. Well, yeah, that doesn't make sense <laughs> until we add more scenes. So if I make a scene and call it display, 
Um, and again, we'll go into more detail on this next week, but I can add my screen here. Um, and now I've got in, um, you know, I'm actually going to capture a different screen so I don't have like a hall of mirrors <laughs> effect here. So this is my laptop's display and I'll put over there. Um, I don't know. We'll put, the, we'll put my, <laughs> um, We'll put that over there. That's a web browser over there. Um, and so I can actually resize this to fit properly. And keep in mind, you can also just right click, transform, fit to screen. It will just kind of do it for you. And now my camera is actually um, my what OBS is seeing. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what other folks would see in the call, which is super handy. You can do kind of more advanced things like um, flip back and forth like if you've ever shared your screen only to show something quickly you'll know that it's a huge pain <laughs> but i can actually just flip back and forth in a flash like this you also notice that it's flipped um most video capture um sorry most video conferencing tools will flip it so that you see it at the right perspective when you show your display it's going to look weird just note that this only looks like that for you anyone who's on the other end of the call is going to see it the correct direction. So you don't have to worry too much about that. Um, but yeah, that's another capability of OBS is that virtual uh, camera stuff. Um, so, and, and we'll get more into scenes and things like that um, in the future. But um, so some, before we kind of wrap, there's a couple other things that I wanted to mention um, some resources. Uh, Meredith put in here a link to the OBS documentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally worth checking out. Um, the, in fact, it's kind of interesting because I didn't even think to link to this because when I first started using OBS, their documentation was like almost non-existent. Um, but now it's actually pretty sophisticated. There's a lot in there. Um, and um, it goes into some advanced stuff, but there's also some good docs on just like how to use certain features and things like that. So that's kind of cool. Um, the one tricky thing with it is that there is a mixture of like, documentation for using it and documentation for developing it, which is mm -hmm. obviously a super different use case um, and not really something I'm concerned or we're concerned about really. But um, that is just another thing in there too. Um, but uh, the other one I wanted to mention is this, uh, this uh, OBS masterclass. Um, and it's from the channel um, Epos Vox on YouTube. And I'm just going to pull it up really quick here and then we'll show it. But um, Basically, uh, this channel, um, the, the guy is pretty f um, focused on like general content creation stuff, like f individuals who want to use OBS. But um, he, he does a ton of different videos, but he has this playlist called OBS Studio Masterclass. And you can watch it as one five hour long video if you want to, or you can go through and find individual a uh, little couple minutes long clips. Um, and it is a couple years old at this point. However, the content is really good. So he does a pretty good job of covering uh, sort of more evergreen concepts in OBS and also just getting into like some things that are more just intrinsic to video and audio production. So mm -hmm. like there's a whole section, I believe, on yeah audio devices and just like how to make audio good. And some of it talks about equipment that you may or may not have, but I do think a lot of the concepts are really, like if you really wanna get into this, this is where I would go next. Um, but this is, this is, a lot of it is more advanced topic. So if you're feeling like uh, you're at your limit with what we're talking about right now, I would, I would save this for later. Um, mm -hmm. So if you're coming to this and you already know some of the stuff we're talking about, and you really wanna get really specific, um, this is a good resource to check out too. So, absolutely, I'm definitely gonna check that out. Yeah, sure. it's it's um, and the channel in general is really interesting. They he does a lot of like um, like reviews of uh, gear and uh, like I, I got this microphone based off of a set of uh, <laughs> I basically I I obsessed over microphones for like a week, watched a ton of videos, found his channel, and eventually landed on this thing. So, um. But uh, yeah, so um, there's a lot to know. I mean, anyone that has, um, if you've ever dealt with video before, and I, um, 
I know Meredith, you've probably done like a little bit of video editing and stuff. I know, mm -hmm. um, you know that this world goes, there's a lot to know, right? It's, it goes deep. Um, so it is a little tricky sometimes to kind of um, know where to stop, mm -hmm. <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, so I like to point out that, hey, there are these more advanced resources. Um, we're not going to get into like the real crazy, like, um, audio, especially the audio production stuff um, in this course, other mm -hmm. than I want audio to work for you. <laughs> um, so, but if you're looking for that, there are really good resources out there. And then again, throw questions in the Discord. Um, I'm happy to point folks in more directions if they have more specific questions. So, Yeah, absolutely. And we'll be, be in there chatting with y'all too. So definitely um, let us know how, how it goes getting set up with OBS. And then we'll dive into the next week with the um, with setting up some more scenes and all that good stuff. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Meredith. Mm -hmm. Absolutely.